Well, NVIDIA is one of the outliers in today's session, bucking the broader market selling action. And you can see gains of just about 1%. And it hasn't been an easy road, though, for this AI darling in the recent weeks because the stock actually sold off after it hit an all-time high of $950. That was back on March 25th. Shares since then have fallen about 10%. So here with more on what the road ahead could look like, we want to bring in Gil Loria. He is DA Davidson Managing Director. Gil, it's great to talk to you. So we don't want to make too much of a 10% drop, especially for NVIDIA, given the fact that we have seen this massive run-up over the last year, a massive run-up even since the start of this year. But when you take a look at some of the technical levels and the pricing action that we've seen in NVIDIA, what does that signal to you? That NVIDIA is caught between two very strong forces. Uh, this year is going to be a spectacular year for NVIDIA. They, they only have five large customers that represent more than two thirds of their revenue. And all those customers are, are telling us in the street that they're gonna buy a lot more GPUs this year. So there's a lot of comfort that, that NVIDIA can exceed its expectations this year. That's one big force. The other big force is that there are many technology trends and market trends that are indicating that this won't last for very long, that by 2026, NVIDIA's revenue may not be higher, it may actually be lower than it is this year. So somewhere between those two forces, uh, the stock is caught and that's why it's, it's become so volatile. Why do we think 2026 is the end for NVIDIA? Not the end, but a, a normal cyclical downturn. Mm. NVIDIA has massive share in this market that's absolutely exploded, but its customers are even bigger companies. So Microsoft, for instance, represents 19% of NVIDIA's revenue last year, and their spend on GPUs was almost 40% of their CapEx, of Microsoft's CapEx. That means their CapEx went from 12% of revenue to 17% of revenue. If that was to sustain or grow, which is what's implied in NVIDIA's estimates, Microsoft would lose five points of margins over the next few years. That's highly unlikely. It's unlikely that this level of investment from these large customers will continue, especially as they develop replacements for NVIDIA's chips. Yeah. Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Google are developing their own chips to replace NVIDIA. Yeah, and Gil, I want to talk to you a little bit more about that because clearly NVIDIA is seeing more and more competition and it seems to be, and it is coming, from even some of its own customers. So what pressure, how much pressure do you see that potentially placing on margins or even just restricting some of their pricing action then in the years to come? Well, that's the thing. Not much this year. This year, it's still all going to be NVIDIA for all these customers. They're buying as many GPUs as they can put their hands on. But within a year or two, they're gonna have production at a level that they can support their own demand. And importantly, they can reduce costs very significantly by using custom chips that are only there to do training and inferencing for AI. Th those are far less expensive chips than GPUs. GPUs are extraordinarily expensive because of how uh, versatile and competent they are. It's like, it's like uh, driving to the grocery store in a gold-plated Ferrari. You don't need that. A, a Tesla Model <laughs> Y will do the trick, and that's what Microsoft, Amazon, and Google are developing in-house. Okay, but having said that, in terms of the Ferrari versus the Tesla there, I wonder to what extent new car makers are gonna come in and disrupt what we see going on with the NVIDIAs of the world. We already have Intel announcing new chips, Google announcing new chips. To what extent are those competitors prepared to really take some market share here? So the large hyperscalers already have products. Those will become, those will ramp up pretty quickly over the next few years. In terms of upstarts like Grok or others, that'll take longer. That'll take a little bit just because chips are very hard to make. It takes a really long time to master that process. But there are, a, there's a wave of new chips that were built specifically and exclusively around how generative AI works. Those are going to be far better and less expensive, and I'd expect those to ramp up in the more of the three to five year time frame. 
So good. when we talk about the fact that at least when I mean, you're taking a look at the longer term timeline, we could see a little bit more uh, pressure from these competitors when it comes to NVIDIA's business. Who do you think is best positioned outside of some of the uh, customers that we already talked about turned to competitors maybe here in the future? Who do you think is best positioned in order to uh, really capitalize on the AI spending and momentum within the space? So I do think it is the, the hyperscalers because they're the ones that are actually using this ch these chips to provide a service and that's not going to stop. There's going to be a continued ramp of activity, training and inferencing on generative AI. So it is first and foremost, Microsoft, which is getting a, a lot of credit, justifiably so, but also Amazon. Let's not forget AWS is bigger than Microsoft Azure and they're just getting warmed up in terms of their ability to provide generative AI services to their customers, which they have more of. And Amazon, by the way, to tie this back to the chip conversation, when they just made a big investment in Anthropic, $2.75 billion, part of the deal was that Anthropic would run on Amazon chips. So Amazon is setting itself up to be vertically integrated here and provide these generative AI services at a much more competitive price. They're getting some credit, but not nearly enough. Gil, to what extent should investors be worried about valuations for some of the names you just mentioned? So Microsoft is trading closer to, to the top of its valuation range, which it deserves to because it's a much better company than it has been for the last 25 years. Um, Amazon is trading a, a little bit above average, but still not at the high end of its multiple range. And so there's a little bit more opportunity there. And to circle back to NVIDIA, it really uh, hinges on what you take for 2026 estimates. If you use the consensus estimates from the 60 or so analysts that have estimates out there, NVIDIA is not very expensive. If you use our estimates, which is least less than half of that, they do look very expensive. All right, NVIDIA, mixed picture on how pricey that name is, Gil. Thank you so much for joining us. Gil Luria, really appreciate it. Thank you.